Hey guys, it's Richard, and today I'm going to be giving you my premium gold paladin deck profile with the Excel 2 markers. And uh, the reason that I feel like I want to give this to you guys is because we got premium collection, and we got um, the heroic just or the heroic evolution. Sorry, I almost called it the heroic justice. That's glorious justice. So I'm just going to give you guys basically my premium collection with uh, Gift 2's deck profile because this deck is actually pretty funny. Uh, and yeah, Gabe hates this deck, so I love it. You're running uh, Crimson Lion Cub Carif because it's a great starter, and this is what makes the game fun. <laughs> so what Carif does is if you have Bowman as your vanguard and you have Gareth on the rear, you move Carif and Gareth to the soul and you search your deck for Blonde Ezel, and because you're writing by what it says in the skill text, you still acquire the gift. So you're superior writing into your grade 3, and you just beat your opponent to death. Next up, for grade 3s, we are running 4 copies of said Blonde Ezels. So you want to run 4, uh, even though your superior writing is because you have Progenitor Dragons and um, Ultima that you want to be able to pay the cost for. So when you're sitting on this, you, if you have another copy in your hand, you can pay cost that way. You also want a bunch of grade 3s, and you also want Ezel targets for Wonder Ezel, so you want to run 4 Blondes. Uh, its main phase skill doesn't really matter. It's if you have Bowman or an, and Gareth on van or rear, you Soul Blast, Kirif, and ride it as Stand. That's for Standard. The other skill is when it attacks, you call a card from your hand to Rearguard Circle. You're going to be striding, so you're not going to use any of those skills. But as an Ezel Vanguard, and it's Blonde Ezel for Kirif. So next up, we're running three copies of Raven Hair Duzzle, and then fourth copy of Raven Hair Duzzle, which is the ultimate break one. So I know a lot of lists just run the four Raven Hair, which is perfectly fine. I decided to run the one old one just because it's really funny. Uh, it also stops protect gifts, which is nice. So I'll just read over their skills real quick. So first Raven Hair skill is uh, if you have Blonde Dezel on your Vanguard Circle and this is in your handy count one, right is Stand, that's for Standard. Their skill is when it attacks, if you have Blonde Dezel on the Soul, you count bus one, against 10k in a crit and your opponent can't use Sentinels, so if you Wonder Dezel into it before you can stride, you can use that skill, which is still pretty nice because the extra crits are cool. This skill is uh, Limit Break 5, so if you have 5 damage and you ride this, or when it's placed on Van, uh, if you have a Grade 3, or if you're riding on top of an Ezel, uh, this gets 10k, and for the entire turn, your opponent cannot call cards other than Grade 1 to Guard Circle. So they can't call Protect Gifts, they can't call their Grade 0 Perfect Guards. They can still G-Guard, but that's why I still think I want to run this, is the one tech, I can go into it with Wonder Rezzo, I can keep it in my hand. They have the same name, so it works with Progenitor Dragons and Ultima, so why not? I'm basically running four Raven Hairs, and one of them is just a really funny tech. Next up... So we are running 12 grade 3s, next up which are 4 copies of Sagramore. Uh, we're running 4 because again, Progenitor Dragons and Ultima, so if I have 2 in hand, I can ride 1, discard the other for Ultima fodder. It's also good on Rearguard Circle because it just gives you more hand. Uh, it's when it's placed from hand, you Soul Blast 1, draw a card, then call a card from your hand to rear. Helps you filter through the deck faster. It's still a good ride target, it's a 12k beater, it's just a really good skill. You have plenty of soul. You will never have to worry about soul in this deck, so for Sagramore. Uh, next up for grade two, this is the only card you want to ride. If you ride any other cards, it uh, sucks. Uh, Bowman. So Bowman's skill is when it's placed from hand, you can discard a card from your hand and search for Gareth. And then its other skill is when it's placed by a card ability, it gets 3k. So you ride this, you search Gareth, you basically got your uh, requirements for Kirf. And then you superior ride and you keep on going with all that. So uh, if you don't see Bowman in your opening hand, you put all of five in your opening hand back, redraw for Bowman. Uh, if you have another grade two in your hand, you want to guard with it and G-assist for Bowman because you really need Bowman to get the deck rolling, basically. So Bowman, great card. Please run Bowman. Next up for great card, we're running four copies of the old Wonder Ezel. So old Wonder Ezel skill is uh, when it's placed on the rearguard circle, if you have a vanguard grade 3 with Ezel, you, and it's standing, you search your deck for another grade 3 with Ezel, or it doesn't say grade 3, it's just another card with Ezel, so you could actually search out this Wonder Ezel if you want to be a grade behind for no reason, and uh, you write it a stand, and that unit gets 5k. So, because of how Excel 2 works, when you superior ride into, bl into Blonde Ezel, you get a Excel 2, draw, 
call Wonder Ezel. Write another Ezel. You get another Excel gift because you're still writing based on what the card text says. You get another draw. If you have another Wonder Ezel, you just basically keep on drawing cards and getting more gifts uh, because of this card. So you want to run four because you want to be able to see it. If you see Bowman and you also have that, you're, you're just good to go. Um, also getting multiple gifts while your opponent's at grade one or two right from the get-go and then steamrolling them is really good. Uh, in the late game, it doesn't really do much, so it's just um, Shield Father, Vanilla. It still works really good because of Spear X, or Spear Cross, whatever you want to call it. And so, it's a really good card. Next up, two copies of uh, Golden Beast Rampage Turtle. I was kind of debating on running this, because the deck works perfectly fine without it, because Bowman is the only grade 2 you want to ride. You could run other cards, uh, such as like more Garrus or more Dindrains. Stride Fodders, if you want to run those, more of those. Uh, but I really do like Rampage Turtle. So what it does is, when it attacks, uh, during the battle it attacks, uh, if you have more rear guards than your opponent, they have to use two cards to guard. So that's really nice because you do lose the five, you lose an extra 5k with Excel 2, but if you're poking them for like 13 or 23, uh, they still have to use two to guard. So that kind of puts out, that puts a little bit of pressure on your opponent's hands, which is nice. And you only need two because you're searching through the deck a lot, so you either draw into it eventually, or superior call it out with uh, Spear X. Um, I like the card. It does pretty good. And um, so it's kind of a threat, so people want to pick it off, so good target to get rid of to avoid your Vanguard being hit. That's pretty much for grade twos. Um, you don't want to run too many grade twos just because you want to see Bowman, and if you G-assist and find the other ones, it kind of sucks. But uh, other than that, the 10, 10 grade twos works fine. We're only running two copies of Gareth. I used to have it at three, uh, just to, because the, the skill is still good, even if you, uh, after the spear ride is done, because you can call it out with Ultima and gives, give a call in 10K, uh, giving itself 10K. You counter charge a lot in this deck, so the counter blasts aren't too much of an issue. But I cut it down to two because I wanted to give Rampage Turtle the the spots. So before I was running eight grade twos and I ran more Gareth's, I only ran three. But uh, to cut down for Rampage Turtle, I'll cut Gareth down to two. You only basically really need it for this period ride. So uh, two copies, just in case one goes to damage, you still have the other one in the deck. Um, and that's pretty much it. So the two works out fine for me. If you want to run more, you can cut down the other grade ones if you want. So, three copies of Dindrain. Dindrain used to be at four, but Rampage Turtle. So, Dindrain's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you Soul Blast one, you can either draw or counter charge, and if you counter charge, it gets 3k. So, counter charge engine, it's mostly your draw engine, you have plenty of souls, you don't have to worry about it. So, Dindrain, still a really good card. You have a lot of things that call from hand and from deck. Good card, draw engine. We all love draw engine. All right. This is where the deck gets kind of janky, and this is where I love it. So, my build isn't kind of like your typical, like, just go for the grade 3 and that's it. It's the um, going for the stride while your opponent's at grade 1. So, because of that, we're running three copies of White Lion and then three copies of Hoel. Now, I really was not planning on making this build, but as I was playtesting with it on area before uh, Excel 2 release and everything... I completely changed my mind because I thought this will never work like it's so rare to happen and it's no kind of pointless because these cards are dead once you start shredding anyways not really the case so the whole point of this is your opponent attacks you while you're at great you're going first your opponent attacks you with their grade one you have one damage so then you call white lion white lion skill is when it's placed on rear if you have a vanguard at Ezel, which you will because Bowman's peer rides you into blonde Ezel. Uh, you pay the cost, which is counter blast. So you counter blast the one damage, you soul charge, put the top card of your deck into your damage zone, uh, and then at the end of your turn, you pick a card from damage zone, put it back in the deck. So it gives you a damage for the turn. And then, so you have one face up, one counter blasted. Then you call Hoel, which is if you have an Ezel Vanguard, you counter charge and soul charge. So now you have two face up, which gives you requirements for Spear X's counter blast two. And since you're already in Knight from calling these two, you meet the requirements, you just discard a card, count plus two, and you stride. So you're striding while your opponent's at grade one. So the next question people always ask is, well, after that, if you don't do that because you don't meet the requirements, what, what are the point of running these cards? Hull's just good because countercharging is good. Feeds soul, um, which you can use for uh, Radiant Sword Gurgit, you can use it for Sagamore, use it for Dindrain. There's a lot of things you can use the soul for in this deck. Uh, you use soul for Spear X too. 
So Soul is always good. Same thing with White Lion, it gives you a Soul Charge as well. Uh, White Lion skill is really nice because, let's say, for example, this happened in a game. I'm playing around and I damage check my Raven Heralds. I'm like, oh no, Raven Hair is damaged. I can call White Lion during my turn. I can counter blast Raven, put a damage in my deck, and at the end of my turn, I can pick the damaged Raven, put it back in my deck, and shuffle at the end of my turn. So now Raven Hair is back in my deck. So this kind of helps you recycle cards. And also, let's say your opponent's at like two damage, and then you're at two damage, and you get a heal trigger, you put you can heal one of those, and at the end of the turn, you still finish the skill and put the damage card back into your deck, so you're back at zero damage. So White Lion still helps out increasing your damage cap, so you can if your opponent tries to heal deny you, which is a thing, um, you can get a damage out of it. It helps feed soul. I still think it's a really good card. If you really don't want to make this build, you can run the V-Series Hoel, which is good. You can run um, Brennius, and you can run Stride Fodders. I don't think this deck needs Stride Fodders is because it has 12 grade 3s, which is a lot, so... But this is just really funny to pull off and your opponent's at grade one, so I run it and it's great. And I'm loving it. If I'm having fun with premium and I want to make my deck fun. So, or Hanali. Hanali is a good card that you can run too if you want to run those. Next up are triggers. Uh, four PGs. Um, I'm debating on whether I want to drop one of these for another grade. Let's say if I don't want to run the White Lion superior, like superior Stride combo, I'm thinking of ditching one of the PGs for a grade 1 PG, like um, Lavinia or Alicia, um, just to put more crits in the deck, just to kill faster. And those PGs have really good skills, and the grade 1 lineup is pretty manipulable. Uh, but for now, it's just the draw PGs, because draw triggers are good and PGs are cool. And if you use Slamey's skill, you can guard with it from the deck. PGs are cool. Uh, next up, this is from Premium Collection. we got four copies of Theodora, player of the Holy Chord. Yeah, so it's a, it's a Heart Thump clone for V-Series. So it's GB1 and your Vanguard attacks, you put this soul, Vanguard gets 10k and you draw a card. And it has 15k shield and 10k power. So premium triggers are good with skills. So for that, so the deck is eight crit and my crit of choice is Flame of Victory. V-Series triggers, you don't want to run any other triggers because you want the power and the shield and shields are good with Slamy. And last up for triggers, running for the V-Series heal. Uh, we have really good counter charge engine, so we don't need to run the counter charge heal that much. I'm not really worried about it, except maybe if, for whatever reason, my locals start becoming like infested with Hanalees everywhere, and I'm like, I really need counter charge. Uh, I might run the Lucky, the not Lucky Rabbit, the uh, Liberator Rabbit. Um, but for now, Howell and Dindrain do fine for countercharging, so I'm not really worried about it. So I'd rather have the power and the shield value than um, 5k triggers. So we're running all 10k triggers in this deck. Next up, G units. Two copies of Spirit Dragon. Uh, two copies, one copy for the Spear Stride. The other copy is uh, if I want to go in for game and I just want to use a bunch of Wonder Uzzles during the main phase, get a bunch of gifts get a bunch of draws, then use the Axe skill to stride during my main phase. I can do that late game, especially if I'm on um, Raven Harazel, which is pretty always fun. So the first skill is G-Zone. If your Vanguard's at grade three, you can Counter Blast two, discard, you have to be in Unite, sorry. You Counter Blast two, discard one, and you stride this from face down. So stride during your main phase. Uh, it doesn't have a requirement for your opponent to be at a specific grade, so you just have to be at grade three, which makes the Ezo Turbo even more fun. The other skill is Van, once per turn, Soul Blast, uh, flip anything in your G-Zone face up. You look at the top five, you call two, and you shuffle the rest into your deck for a Soul Blast. So it's nice because if your opponent uh, denies you damage, you're just at zero damage. You have Spear X, you have Gurga Helios, you have, you have G-Units to go into that you don't have to really worry about. So Spear X is a really good card. Run it at two because you want to at least go into it twice. If you have, if you're kind of struggling on like money and you're like, oh, I don't have these expensive cards, run into the Spear X. You can use the skill as much as you want, you know? It's a good card, and I think you have plenty of soul and you have plenty of like unflipped abilities, so you can do the Counter Blast 2 discard as much as you want. Also, the fact that it doesn't require a grade 3 discard, if you can't pay the cost for stride, as long as you can get to Unite and Counter Blast 2, you can still stride, which is really cool. 
So more reason why I don't think this deck needs Stride Fodder as much is because you have access to Spirits. All right, enough talking about that. Uh, two copies of Mithra Ezel. Link Joker exists. That's just about it. But other than that, it's flip fodder for Spear X. So I do Spear X and I flip this because I'm not playing against Link Joker. And the other copy is for the other flip flopper. So, but let's read what it does. It's Karen Blast 1, choose a face down copy with the same name as itself. Uh, if you have a heart with Ezel, you look at the top five, call one, the rest get shuffled back. And this unit and the unit you called gain power equal to the base power of the unit. Uh, also, you unlock your whole board on top of that. So if your opponent playing Link Joker, this deck still does fine if you have some lock cards, but if you really need your field back, just go into Mythrazel, you get field back. Yes, your cards unlock, so Starvaders get some bonuses off that and stuff, whatever. You get your field back, which is cool. Other than that, it's flip fodder. Uh, you can, if you really don't want to run this, just because you know for a fact no one's playing Link Joker, your locals, you can run Heavenly Log Gurgit. I'm not running Heavenly Log Gurgit just because of the way my G-Zone is, which you guys will see. Um, but you can run that as Flip Fodder. You can run, um, you know, he more Helioses as Flip Fodder. There's plenty of things you can do. But for now, it's really kind of like, oh, just in case I play a Link, Link Joker, it's an extra deck just to counter one deck. Why not? As well as, like, mainly one of the clans that has a super, super easy way to get rid of locks, so might as well. Two copies of Helios. Uh, this card used to be at four because it was so great, but because Spear X is usually our first stride, we want to have room for Spear X. Uh, if you have the Helios, but you don't have expensive cards like, um, what's his name again? Ultima. If you don't, if you really want to make up space for cards that maybe you're missing, just run more Helios. Helios is such a good card. Uh, first skill, act, once per turn unite. Flip a copy of this face up, you get drive plus one. No cost, really, so no counter blast, nothing. You just flip, drive plus one. The other skill is GB3. This gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and when it attacks, uh, your opponent can't call grade one cards. PGs are grade zeros now, so it really kind of depends what your matchup is. If you're playing against Luar, they're usually running grade one PGs, so this can help push your game. Uh, especially if you have uh, Raven Hair ridden and you have its skill active, you're basically saying you can only G guard, uh, which is nice because all that power up you'll get on top of that will make it harder for them to guard, plus the quad drive. Quad drive helps you fill your hand. Uh, still really good card. I usually don't go into it more than once just because by the time I can hit Ultima, I just go into it and that's kind of what seals the game anyways. So going into Helios more than once is kind of rare, but that's the way I have it set up for now. Next up is two copies of Glorious Raining. This is for finishers. Uh, Glorious Raining came back. It's a good card. If you don't have Glorious Raining, just put in more Helios. If you don't have Helios, put in Heavenly Law, because Heavenly Law got reprinted. Anyways, uh, the skill is when it attacks, you kind of blast, flip a copy of itself face up. You pick two of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck. You look at the top seven. Among those seven, you call units equal to the number of cards face up in your G zone. So if you have five face up, of those seven, you call five and then you put the rest back in deck and shuffle. After you've called, if you called three or more units, you soul charge and counter charge. So you're getting the counter charge for its own cost back. You get more soul. Uh, if you called cards like Dindrain, you're getting soul for to pay for those costs. And yeah, that's basically it. So you basically get multi-attacks on top of those Excel markers that you're gonna get. So if you called turtles, you swing, you put the turtles back. And if you have like exactly seven cards left in your deck, you can call those exact same turtles. So it's kind of like a restand. Uh, Again, Raven, the old old Raven Hair, the ultimate break one, makes this card really fun because you just have a bunch of attacks that they can only guard with grade ones from their hand with. So it makes it harder for them to miss all those pokes. Unless they get a damage trigger, then you're kind of screwed. Other than that, it's still a really good card. It's kind of rare for me to go into it, but again, uh, G Zone is for situations, and you might have a situation where you want to do a bunch of attacks. Yeah, as the famous Nikki Goldman once said, you never not want to go into Glorious Raining because it's too much value. Don't know if that's changed, but I remember he said that. So that was it for the um, kind of the flippy flippy strides. We're going to go into the ones with don't flippy flippy. So I'm running one copy of uh, Radiant Sword Gurgit. The reason I'm running this is because um, you do a lot of soul charging. So you're going to have like maybe seven or eight cards in your soul at some point. And it's just really fun when you can be like, okay, stride, Count Blast 4, Soul Blast 8, my field gets plus 20k. Why not, you know? Um, 
it uh, helps hit for really big numbers. On top of the Raven hair, like I said before, it just makes really good plays. Um, it's again, it's such a situational card. It's there, but there's other things you can obviously go into. The flow of the game is usually Spear X, Helios, Ultima, or Spear X, Ultima, Glorious Reigning, Ultima. You know, I don't know if I said Ultima twice there, but who knows. Total Puri Agnos. So this is our Progenitor Dragon. Progenitor Dragon's actually really good in this deck because a lot of the cards that have effects that are when they're placed from hand. So Agnos's skill is you can only uh, pay the cost by discarding a copy of your Vanguard. Uh, when it's placed, you count plus one, soul plus one. You call as cards from your hand to fill up your rear growth circle as much as possible. So you have to call on top of units that you have on the field already because it's not about empty circles, it's about circles. So even if you have all seven of your rear guards occupied or six or however many you have, you have to fill them up from your hand as much as possible. And which kind of hit or miss, but it helps out because uh, after you do that, you draw three cards and you can proc off the effects of Sagamore and Dindrain and Gareth, stuff like that. Once you do that, so you can probably be drawing more cards thanks to Sagamore and Dindrain. And the other skill is basically when it's face up in your G zone, you get to strike for free, for free for the rest of the game. So situational card, still good. If I have a hand that doesn't have triggers in it and I just want to get some more advantage out of the rest of the game, might as well. And lastly, the finisher that pretty much ends most of the games, which is um, it's your Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. So cost is ultimate stride. So you have to discard a card with the same name as your Vanguard. And uh, yada, 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 if you don't win that, if you don't win that turn, your G-Zone goes away, blah, blah, blah. When it's placed, you count plus two, search for four cards. Two get called to rear, the other two get placed on top of your deck. And for the rest of the turn, when you drive check a trigger, it gets applied to all your units. So call two units, put two crits on top. All your units gain 10k and a crit. So your all your rear guards swing for uh, 20k with uh, three crit. Goes great with Turtle, and it's overall a really good finisher because Gold Paladin is the only XL clan in United Sanctuary. Here we are. It's, it's fun. <laughs> I love it. If you can't afford Ultima, I would say get more Spirex and more Helios. That would be a good priority. But for the most part, Ultima is your win condition for most games. So there you go. G Guardians. We're running two copies of Slammy Flare because shields are good. You choose a rear guard, put it on the bottom of your deck, look at top five, call two among them with different grades. They go to the guardian circle and then you shuffle your deck. Next up, we're running two copies of True Liberator Healing Elise. Elise is really good because it helps you fill your field, which you don't have a lot of access to because most of the Unite abilities you have to do from hand. Uh, Spear X kind of helped with that because its skill is just a soul blast and a flip to help you fill your field, which is nice. But other than that, Elise is good. If your field's kind of empty, you can start filling your field up a little bit again. So what it does is when it's placed, you have to be a GB1. You can plus one, choose a G Guardian, turn it face up from face down. Look at two cards from the top of your deck, call one to the guard circle, the other goes to the bottom. If the guard is successful, that unit can be moved to a rear guard circle. Uh, move is not placed, so you cannot activate the on-place abilities of the unit that you put from the guard to the rear guard circle. So no, you can't use Dindrain or Sagramore or a whole, literally you can't use their skills. So, but you still want to use it to help you fill up your G zone face up for uh, glorious raining and to fill your field, which is always nice. And lastly, one copy of Ratcomb. Uh, you can run Rhea. But I like Ratcomb because there's a lot of times where I'll have cards in my hand that are like Wonderuzzel or uh, Hoel that I don't want to use. Maybe if I'm running low on deck or I don't need the counter charge or White Lion a lot of times because I'm like, eh, I don't need the damage. I'd rather just draw a card so I can discard uh, a White Lion and maybe draw a trigger for more shields. So Ratcomb is good because there's a lot of things that you can drop and draw on this deck, take advantage of it. Other than that, it's mostly flip fodder for Elise. That was it. That was the deck. Um, here's the XL2 markers. I run four of them because I feel like if, you know, you excel more than four times, you should be winning by then. If not, it's just a flex. And then four of the regular excels for matchups where you don't want to use XL2. 
most of the times I only use Excel 1 if I'm playing against Force, because a lot of times the net the plus 5 isn't really enough, and I'd rather have the plus 10k. But most of the time I'm going into Excel 2 just because Wonder Ezzel and Excel 2 is just too good not to take advantage of. So that was it. That was the deck profile. Um, if you guys like it, let me know. Yes, I do like the White Lion with Hoel combo. I think it's hilarious. I think White Lion is still good because it helps you manipulate your damage zone and put triggers back into your deck. And I like Golden Beast Rampage Turtle. And I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. If you don't like premium, I'm sorry. It's my favorite format because I really don't like turning cards sideways and doing nothing for turns. Um, if you think premium is broken because of this deck, play against the new NLK and Ichikashima because those are also kind of unfair sometimes and this deck isn't like super overpowered where it's tier one. Premium is a lot of fun and you guys should try it out. If it's not your thing, don't, don't bother people who like premium. <laughs> Anyways, that was the deck profile. Hope you guys liked it. Comment, subscribe, like the video. And if you want to see more uh, content, let me know. If you want to see another version of this deck without the White Lion, how I play it, let me know. That's more content for me and more stuff for you guys to see. So I was Richard, and I'll see you all in the next video.